hands and with your spirit, always, always come out pretty good. Amen. That's what you're proud of. Amen. And Jose, how you been doing? Good, really good. Um, getting uh, adjust to this new situ situation. Yes. Uh, but healthy and positive and believing God more and more and more. Every day. Amen. Well, I'm o I'm always happy to talk to you both. And during the years, it's gotten harder and harder because our lifestyles have gotten really, really consumed with people. Right? You are both doing not only uh, shows, but you're in demand always as photographers, as makeup artists, and then of course with what we're going to talk about later today in the your nonprofit, your 501c3. You guys have a lot of people that are reaching out to you for many, many reasons. So, but I want to start a little bit. I always do this. I want to, I want people to get to know why you're so special, right? In my life and why, how we connect it. And I just remember, you know, being a model and AJ being a photographer and Jose doing my makeup. And, and I just remember the good old days, right? I had this long hair and, you know, <laughs> the Latin lover, and and I tell you, it was it was uh, you know I, I love being on stage. You guys know that, and um, and then unfortunately, I get diagnosed with cancer, and you know you guys kind of responded. You guys came all the way from Orlando uh, to see me at the hospital. You guys were two of the uh, very few people that I let in during my hardest time. Later on, people came, but at the beginning of it. Uh, you guys, you came and you prayed and, and you shared so much with me. I remember some of it, <laughs> some of it I don't remember, but I just remember you being there, your presence being there. And uh, tell me a little bit of what you thought about me. I know people always, you know, oh, well, you were like this. You were like, I always like to hear people's perspective. What did you think of me before cancer? What, what were your thoughts about David? Yeah. Uh, uh, when we meet him, he was a, a model, was modeling for a tuxedo company, and then we do a fashion show. And that's why when we meet him, but in that moment, I don't know why some connections we have between us, but uh, the best thing is he was too excited, too perfectionist. He's the only, the, 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 the last model who came out in there because he needs to, to fix all the clothing, hair, makeup, everything, and then, uh, but I always to do the best of him, you know, show the best of him on the stage, and that, that, that's got my attention, because not everybody is like that, not everybody is uh, act like him, but uh, the best thing is, he was helping, also I remember that he was helping another models, the one who was shy or, or they don't have much experience, he was helping the rest of the guys, so I admire that in that moment, and then, after that, we chose him to do one of our model doing photo session with people on from TV here in Orlando. Uh, that when we meet uh, Olga and Matt, yes, and we do a bridal photo session. I remember we have a lot of fun in the photo session and everything. But uh, just few days after that situation is when David starts feeling not that good, you know, about about the health, about the the. He didn't know in that moment he, he got cancer. And then when everything we discovered, because he called me that one day and then told us about how he felt about the situation, I was impressed because no, no, ne, uh, what to say that, never, never during the whole process, he feel bad, he feel sad, he, feel, he always was excited and he always have faith in God and he's going to survive and the only thing I remember of David is when any time when before he got to the chemotherapy he called me the day before the same day I said I'm sorry I don't know if I'm going to be alive tomorrow mm -hmm. but I, the only thing I want to let you know is that I love you guys so I always remember that from David um, when we met you uh, we saw you at the fashion show and as 
a producer, a photographer, a hairdresser. I remember that AJ told me, he said, this is the guy we need for our show. Because here in Orlando was so difficult at that time to found uh, male models with uh, the condition, the physical condition that you have. Uh, so he said, we need to meet him, we need to talk to him, we need to invite him to our fashion show. Uh, that was the first time when we saw you the first time. He said, that's the guy we need for our show. <laughs> I, I, you know, I remember all the shows and in Orlando. I did a lot in Orlando, Lakeland, Tampa, and uh, and I remember the last show I did in Orlando um, with cancer in August of two thousand and and four, uh, and you know, and I I, I didn't know what was going to happen to me, and uh, I mean two thousand six, sorry, and the sec this is the second time that I went through cancer, and. Um, and I remember telling Ron Sassinos that, you know, what I was getting ready to go into and I spoke with you guys and I said, you know, I, I did remember saying, like, I'll be back. I hope you guys find a spot for me or something like that. But uh, but I what I always remember is uh, that you guys did. You guys get kept me in, in, a, in a good state of mind to not think about it and go through it and do the show. And I did the show like like I always did. Nobody really knew I was sick. Um, about two days later, I was in the emergency room. <laughs> so, um, but I end up, you know, I end up seeing you guys through my stuff. And I remember you guys starting the show, uh, Discover Your Beauty, the fashion show. And, uh, and I remember that I, I modeled in the first, in the first one. And my, my mom and my dad came. And my dad doesn't really come to shows. You know that. You both knew that. And he came to a few of them after that, but he came to that one. And, and it was really interesting. That meant so much more to me, but it was because of you two that my dad came. You know, it was the fact that you guys always made time for me and came down to Miami. And my father saw that and said, I'm going to go. My father has never been to a fashion show until yours. You know, so and this is at the beginning of Discover Your Beauty. You know, this is at the beginning, at the start. And now is over a decade, you know, and uh, we have done. Also, something that maybe you don't know, your mom, she helped us a lot with donations. Oh, wow. Clothings, uh, many things for, for Discover Your Beauty. Oh, wow. Maybe you don't know. I, don't, I didn't know that. No, I mean, she. She always supported both of you, but I don't. I didn't know the details. You know, sometimes she just said, "Oh no, I'm I'm gonna do this with AJ. I'm gonna do this with Jose," but she wouldn't give me the details. So, but I know she's I know she's watching. So, you know, I love you, mom. We all love you. Um, so we, we you get this show, you start this show, and the beginning was just kind of like let's just do this show in memory of or or you know in in a celebration, you know, survival, right? But did you think the show was going to become what it has? No, actually, uh, the first show that we did uh, was uh, a trial for us because we don't have no experience. Uh, we don't know exactly what's going to happen. Uh, even many people came to us and said, don't do it. Uh, you don't going to do good. Uh, you're going to have problems. And we say, well, we are not like that. We, when we want to do something, we don't care what people can think or what can happen. We go for what we want and what our heart tells us to do, and we put things on God's hands. Amen. And we did the first show. Uh, we expecting only 150 people, and we get almost 500 people in that show. We have to return in money and everything. After that, we got the second and the third show. Everything uh, at the beginning was involved with our industry. Uh, you know, yeah, wedding, fashion, wedding. Fashion until the cancer come to us. Yes. To, to our friends and, and the people we know. You was the first one yeah. uh, that we, we know that 
Well, I remember the last shooting that we did together with Olga Iman, and that day you was not feeling well. Yeah. Uh, but we don't know that you were sick or you, we don't know until we, we know later. And, and from there, that's how we start doing this COVID duty to support the cancer survivors. Yeah, no, I remember that, uh, you know, the biggest thing for me, I don't know why, is that you put a camera in front of me <laughs> and I could be dying and I don't know why, but I just, I come alive and I don't know if it's a mental, you know, strength. I don't know what it is, but I for sure know that, um, you know, the, the show that I did in Orlando with cancer, I was covered with cancer and my girlfriend at the time came and she said, David, you couldn't tell you were sick when you were on stage, but then when you were in the back, you were in pain. And uh, when I modeled for you guys for Discover Your Beauty, I was 160 pounds. I just got some weight back, but I was still very skinny. And I remember that I felt so awkward because my neuropathy was so bad. I was, I was in so much pain. And it was so weird for me to walk the stage the way I used to. And I just remember the fact that what I saw in both of you was a perfectionism. You guys were always so direct you guys were not and it wasn't about making friends or offending anybody you were just you put so much into everything you did from makeup to photography with aj i, were, I was a model for aj i know <laughs> you guys put so much that it was hard for me not to be better or try to be better because i saw the work that you guys did behind the scenes I saw the work you guys did with the other models. I saw the work you did with me and Olga. I, I, I remember Lassie, the dog. We had a dog, a la, like a Lassie dog. That was a beautiful dog that we, we did a photo shoot with. But you guys were so perfectionism about everything was so, had to be perfect. And I felt like I did not want to let you guys down. So even that show, I was very weak. I modeled with your daughter, Jose, her first show ever with Jose's daughter. And she was, how old is she, 13, 14? Yeah, 13. 13. And it was her first show, and I got to model with her, and I said, I can't mess this up. <laughs> I was like, I cannot mess this up, because it was her first show, and, and she was so happy to do it with me, and I was just so blessed. And uh, But, you know, we fast forward years later, and you guys always invite me and to model or to host or, or to speak. And, and I tell you, it's the highlight of my year. Uh, to always, I look forward to it, you know, and you guys have helped so many people, but you know, for me, I have so many memories, Jose and, and AJ, can you tell me uh, so many women and men too, that have walked that stage besides the fashion and besides the designers, but the cancer, what is one, at least one person, I know there's a lot and they're all special, but one that kind of like touched you you know, in the last decade of, of people that walked the stage with us that really, really touched your heart? So, it's many. I know. Many of them, yeah, many of them you know, because we get too close to everybody. We feel like we're family. If they are in pain, we're in pain too. If they're happy, we're happy. So, we're really close to everybody, especially when they have cancer or when they're through the cancer. But uh, the, uh, one of the case was, for example, um, Selena, Selena Vargas. She, we met her like a three, four years ago. And then she was really in, in bad condition with cancer. She got cancer, you know, metastasis everywhere. But uh, I remember she always was happy. Doesn't matter she got pain, she cannot walk. Her case was really touch us because when she was uh, uh, she went to, to, to be pregnant when she got no cancer yet, or at least she didn't know, she got pregnant and for the second time, and then like a three months after the pregnancy, they discovered that she got cancer. And then the doctor said, you know what, we need to remove the baby to do the chemotherapy. And she said, no, no. I decided for the life of my son. Yeah. And, then, and then she fight, she received some chemo, but a more, it's more, more soft not that uh, invasive, you know, but at the end, she was fighting uh, seven months of pregnancy, 
she fell down and broke her hips and then she only uh, I mean some cells of cancer go to the bones and then she got cancer in the bones too but I, I don't remember only one day when she was suffering or 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 say oh my god why me no she always was inclusive she was helping another cancer survivors yeah. during that process and that touched us that touched us because when you're in that condition i believe you don't have too much energy to help somebody else when you cannot help yourself but she always was praying praying for everybody she called me almost every day and asked me for another cancer survivor how they doing yeah you know so that that that, that touched our heart and then with the get close and she modeled in our show for two years straight. Unfortunately, the last year was when uh, she passed away like a 45 days after the after show. show. Yeah, yeah after the show. But she was ready. She was ready. Yeah. I remember when a few days before she called and she said, Talk to Jose. I said, You know something, Jose? I guess I'm ready to go to heaven. Amen. And then, and then that was, that, that's one of the, of the cases. There's too many cases. Well, before Jose, and I want Jose to give me a, a, a case. Selena was very special to me because she was one of those people that reached out to me and said, hearing me speak at your show gave her faith. Yeah. And um, I didn't know if I was going to see her the following year. And I went back and I spoke and she told me and she spoke with me and she smiled and she gave birth to this beautiful baby and um and last year i saw her again i took a picture and she just kept smiling she said david thank you for 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 just being you and giving me hope and she got up on stage and it was the highlight of the show when she got up on stage and in her wheelchair and she got to model with her kids and her husband, it was amazing. So for me, it was very personal because, you know, when you do something, you don't ever know who's going to be listening to you. But if you do it from the heart and you know you're supposed to do it, you know, it changes people in a way that you'll never even know the effect. And I remember a speech that I gave, you know, a couple years ago that I said, your vision, you didn't, you never imagined how big the show has become, not just the 500 to 1,000 people that come, but to the people that listen to the messages from these people after. And the way these cancer survivors are looking forward to walking, people that never model in their life or walk, they're looking forward to modeling because you've given them this love that they believe, I want to go do this. And uh, so anyway, Selena was one of those people, or Dallas, all these other people that call me. And so if you didn't give me a platform to speak, I, I would have never known that I had an impact in their lives. So I want to thank you for that because, you know, I've done it almost every year or at least every couple of years. And you, you have made me even confirm the reason I'm alive because by me speaking at your event, these women have come back to me and some of them have fought unfortunately lost their lives but they they have shared with me that they got strength from whatever god did from me you know so jose one of your experiences well it's what aj said it's so many uh and uh, we get too close to everybody i don't know if that is good or bad but So many, uh, especially your 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 life, your testimony for us is, and also for discovering your beauty is so uh, impact and so important. Uh, I told many people every year, uh, David David is discover your beauty, yes. and he need to be discovering your beauty. Uh, when people say, "Well," but Sometimes when uh, he talk, he talk uh, a little bit. I say I don't care. He can talk because people wait for what he gonna say, and that's change life. Yes. And that's what people hear, wait to hear when we are in the show. And that's our uh, meaning to do all of these things. All of this work is.
is do people listen from your experience for for what you go through and, and they can learn and they can see that is is something better and, and and it's not the end i remember the day that i went to the hospital and you were there i i know from the beginning that you're going to survive and that you're going to be okay but if i left from what I see, when I saw you there in the hospital, I can say, no, you're not going to make it, you know? But I feel inside my heart that you're going to go through and that you're going to make it. And even I have a dream, you know, the way you're going to come back to our house. I told AJ, even the same clothes, I have that picture. I have that picture that we took together when you come back recovering from from cancer the first time. And I was not alone that day. Even outside in the waiting room was Yariselli. You remember Yariselli from Puerto Rico? Mm -hmm. But she don't feel strong enough to get inside the room and see you in, in that in that way. Uh, we can I can I, you, we can even not talk because you I think you was on medication or something. Uh, I just pray for, for you, I put my hands in your knees, and then when I walk out, uh, your mom was there, and your dad, and the doctor, and I hear what the doctor say, but I say inside me, he gonna make it, and he gonna uh, recover from this. Well, I, I remember that your presence meant a lot to me. I never expected what it has become. Uh, I will tell you that last year was a very special day and you guys, I, I shared a little bit with you guys, but last year was the day that the vision that I had on August 25th, 2006, which is the cancer picture that you see right here. I took a picture and that day it was the, I had a vision that I was going to be on stage in a tuxedo with a mic with short hair and I, I always thought it was just a dream I always thought it was just God kind of showing me but that's what gave me hope to fight that I was gonna survive and that happened literally 13 years to the date August 25th 2019 and I was on your stage and God revealed to me almost like this epiphany this was the picture the vision that I gave you 13 years ago that you were going to be healed and you were going to be on that stage. And that speech was called destined to survive. And I could not believe that that was, I mean, I knew that 13 years meant a lot because I was originally diagnosed August 4th, August 13th of 2004. So 13 years was kind of a, you know, a big deal. I don't know why, but the fact that that vision came to pass while I was on stage, and it was in the middle of my speech after my after I spoke about my father passing away that God revealed to me you were destined to survive and it was on your stage so God even gave me a picture of your show which I did not know 13 years before in August 25th and that will always be part of my story now that that vision was 13 years later and it was on your show discover your beauty and uh, so you guys are part of not just my journey, but my testimony in so many different ways. Um, but I'm really proud of what you guys have done. I started my nonprofit last year uh, to help children with cancer. And about three years ago, right, I believe you guys started Discover Your Beauty. The DYB Foundation is a nonprofit to give back not just what you guys are doing with the show, but you're actually financially helping cancer patients while they're going through treatment you guys are providing food and, and 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 outfits and shirts and clothing and all kinds of stuff even financial help to all these where did that finally come to pass that you guys felt that way cancer survivors or people who was fighting in that moment with cancer but uh, uh, we help with everything we can you know from our package 
And then one day, somebody from Miami come here to do an interview to us. And then she said, what are you doing with the foundation? I said, no, we don't have foundation. We have a fashion show. And then dedicated to the cancer survivor. I said, no, 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 no. You have to have a, 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 a foundation. Because when you have a foundation, you can look for help, especially for grants and different ways to help the cancer survivors. In that way, you don't have to sacrifice your savings and then you can help more. And then that's what the idea, we, you know, we, we took that idea and we, we talked with different people, also with uh, Gloria Puerto, our friend Gloria Puerto, which she got a, a foundation too, and she started helping me to create everything. But the first thing she said, you know something? The thing is you have to pay for this, you have to look for, for accounting to create and that costs money, and then say, that's okay, that's okay. I always believe when, when you have one, to do something for your heart, God do everything for you. Amen. And we call our accountant and we talk with him and ask him how much he charge. And he said, no, is it for cancer survivor? I don't charge you nothing. Wow. So, so <laughs> by God, you know, help us with everything. I remember, I don't know nothing about the foundation, but I remember one day in Discovery Your Beauty, 2011, when Ellie Barrera was in the States, she was in really bad condition with cancer. I remember you say on the stage something with her next to her, say something, we are walking miracles. I believe it, those two words, walking miracles, is in my mind for that day until now. And then I admire that. I admire that, that powerful word to say, I know what God inspired you to say those words, but uh, that's help us. It's not only as a survivor, it helps us also to help somebody else. That's why we open the foundation and then we're helping, like you said, we help people the cancer survivor. Sometimes the cancer survivor doesn't have any uh, income Correct. or they lose the job because when you do the treatment, you cannot work or maybe you don't have some time to pay the copayment or the, or the chemo and then, or maybe have no food on the fridge and then we also visit them and then help them and especially to teach them how to feel pretty. Yes. It doesn't matter if you don't have hair or you don't have breasts or you don't have something for your body, uh, you still need to feel pretty. Amen. So that's why it's our, you know, way to help the cancer survivors to the foundation. And, and Jose, how did you feel about the foundation when you guys started it? What was your vision? Yeah. Explain to us that we need to make pictures, that we need to uh, document, document yeah. everything. The articles and, and all that stuff, yeah. I say, yeah, but that's not what I'm doing this for. Mm -hmm. And she said, yeah, but you have to do it because if you don't do it, people are not going to know what you're doing and they're not going to help you. So at the beginning, it was a little difficult for me to go and do things and have pictures and post in Instagram and put it in Facebook. But then I, I, I understand little by little uh, also about uh, all the process, you yeah. know, it's the process to, to get uh, uh, the funding to yeah. help people. Even sometimes I get in a fight with other people. Uh, uh, we get into many meetings and they, say, and they say, well, we need to go and do this and do that. And I say, well, if we have to go through all of those things, I don't want to do it. Yeah, it's hard. My people cannot wait. My people cannot wait a month doing application and thing to have food or to have uh, things they needed right away. 
Absolutely. Well, I would. Yeah. Well, yeah, you have a board and, and people want to, their opinions and whatever, but you got to always remember this is your vision. And, you know, at the beginning of every meeting, that needs to be understood. This is your vision for why you started this in the first place. Just the same thing with me. You know, I was always scared to do it. My mom pushed me right after my father passed away. She's the reason. She says, I'm going to help you. Let's get it going. And we did. And my accountant, within months, we got approved. It was a God thing. It was, it, sometimes it takes a year. And, and it took... Yeah. In, in, in a month. It was it was it was a miracle like like my life and I just always believed that. Well, you know, there's we could go on and on because we have so many stories and uh, you know, I hope that one day we're able to even do more to share so much more with you guys for the foundation mine and theirs together. You know, part of this show that I wanted to do was to share something about ourselves that gives us hope or strength every day. And I said to all my guests, give me one word. So today is going to be special. We're going to have two words. I want each of you to give me a word that gives you strength, hope, or drives you to continue to do what you do every day, even to the season that we're in right now. And then tell me how that word, what the meaning of that word for you. AJ, let's start with you. Beautiful. Yes, that's the word. I mean that word because I always recommend everybody, not because you have cancer or have any problem or any situation, you have to feel you are beautiful. That's why in our show, this is the, the, the slide to take, you know, the, the, the end of the, of the show always will repeat, remember you are beautiful. Because we need to remember that every morning, every morning when you awake, look at the mirror. Look at your eyes. Look how beautiful your eyes are. You look how many color you have in your iris. You know, so you are beautiful. You're creation of God. So when you feel like that and you start lo loving yourself and, and, and look to the mirror how beautiful you are, the day will be co completely different for you. So so that might work. Amen. So it's beautiful. Remember, you're beautiful. Jose, give me a word that can't be the same word. Cannot be the same word. You cannot. That's... I, I want to uh, choose love. 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 God is love. And nothing is possible if we know with love. Uh, in this day that we are living and experiencing all of this situation and People saying so many, many things, and people. Some people say it's the end of the world. Uh, well, I can tell you this: love is the solution of all our problems, and God gives us the opportunity to love each other. Not the way we think the love is; is the way He tells us to love is. So he said it himself, what we need to do, just love God with all your heart and love One another. each other the way he wants us to love each other. So that's my word today. Amen. It's, it's everything. If um, with love, we can continue our life. We can be better and better into... God come back for us. Amen. Well, I want to thank you both. I know you have an, a podcast that you guys are doing as well and your YouTube channel as well. I'm going to share that on the description, on the videos, uh, on Facebook and YouTube. Uh, I want to thank both of you for, for today, but I want to thank both of you for believing in me and for pushing me and for always making me look beautiful even when I didn't think I was. So I want to thank you for that and for loving me the way you guys do. Okay, the podcast, yes. We're going to be the interview you and ask you all the questions. Okay, 
It'll be my, I'll be ready. Don't worry. Well, I want to thank AJ and Jose. And I want to conclude with this. Their beautiful words are beautiful and love. And I tell you that it was uh, one of the shows I remember that God reminded me of that exact word, beautiful. I remember that when I had long hair, people used to call me all kinds of things, you know, from Jesus to the Latin Fabio to whatever. But when I was bald and I was at the gym one day, there was a young lady that thanked me for me helping her daughter go through an experience that she had. And because I gave her daughter so much wisdom, she wanted to come thank me because she didn't know if I was going to live through this. And she found out I was going through cancer. She came to the gym that day. I was bald. I had no eyelashes, nothing. But yet she said one thing to me. She says, you look like an angel and you're so beautiful right now. And that morning, I remember I didn't look beautiful. I didn't think that I had beautiful. But what she reminded me of, and I was on stage at Discover Your Beauty years ago, God revealed that to me and say, say these words. Your beauty is not your outside, is not your hair, is not anything else. Your beauty, your true beauty is from within. Your beauty is from within. AJ and Jose have made their life making people look beautiful on the outside. What they didn't think was that the love that they gave those people were showing them the beauty inside. So today, I leave you with that message. Don't ever forget how beautiful you are inside. And if you haven't revealed it yet, I hope that today, listening to the three of us, you look inside yourself and find your true beauty. Discover your beauty. Thank you again for joining us today. And I'll tell you, like I always say, find hope, have faith, and live every day with purpose. And I'll add this because I added this at their show. Be a miracle in someone's life today. God bless you guys. Until next time, I'm David Octavio Gandell.